This is a water-cooled PC that I can't wait to put together. And once it is built, see exactly how a rig with this standard of parts will perform on a variety of the AAA titles. Especially considering we will be able to get the most from these components, thanks to the water cooling loop mitigating temperatures to an extreme degree. We're going to begin this build by preparing to install the heartbeat of the rig, the second fastest Intel CPU, the new Intel i9-14900K. This chip arrived essentially as a clone of the Intel i9-13900K, which broke the record as the fastest CPU out of the box at the time with a 6GHz peak turbo clock. While we recommend the AMD Ryzen 7 7800X 3D as the best CPU choice for a PC that is focused purely on gaming, the benefit of going with the Intel i9-14900K, outside of its still blistering gaming performance, is the top tier productivity performance, something the 7800X 3D lacks. So while the 14900K isn't the king of the hill for gaming, balancing productivity and gaming performance, the 14900K reigns supreme as the better all-rounder. Now that we have finished the motherboard installation, we can begin to plan our loop. Starting with the CPU water block, we have selected the EK Quantum Velocity Squared as the center of this loop. This block is really the ultimate in performance when it comes to water cooling, and with its clear finish and RGB backlight, it has a look that few other blocks can replicate. The 14900K draws a lot of power, so to support the water-cooled setup in preventing temperature spikes, we will not cheap out on the thermal paste, so I am applying Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut Extreme. Just like its name, this paste has extremely high thermal conductivity. Now that we have locked down the CPU water block, we can move on to unboxing the chassis for this water-cooled PC. We have selected the newly released Lian Li 011 Dynamic Evo RGB. With the motherboard installed, it is time to unbox and install the basis of our water loop, the EK Manor distribution plate. With a design that favours streamlined tube routing, it will strongly enhance the aesthetics of this custom loop, and by backmounting this clear distro, we'll get a great look at the internal water loop. Furthermore, one of the advantages of using this distro plate is the ultra-silent pump. A water-cooled PC is ideally a much quieter option than a traditionally cooled gaming PC, and a quiet pump just ensures this benefit is retained. Now we can begin to finish the externals of the loop by unboxing these two EK radiators, and then I'll be fitting them with Lee & Lee SL NIF fans. With those locked into the case, we can now begin to unbox the graphics card, and then we'll prepare to water cool this RTX 4090. We've got the gorgeous Asus ROG model, but unfortunately, we'll be tearing down this card's cooling unit to remove the PCB. But it will come out even better looking than originally once we've locked it into the EK Quantum Vector water block. This model from EK comes with a back top plate, so in order to really get the most out of this water block visually, we will subsequently vertically mount this graphics card. This will achieve a nice view of the underside of the water-cooled GPU, which combined with a coloured coolant and this block's RGB backlight will be a statement piece for this rig. Now here's something I've been excited to get to for this build, the tubing. We have selected a staple pipe for this water-cooled PC, standard clear pipe. It's hard to compete with the clear pipe, especially when we are going with a tinted coolant. Thanks to its see-through nature, we can see the active flowing effect of this water-cooled PC, and the variety of RGB throughout this build will permeate the pipes for an even more intense design. In terms of tube routing, we've gone with a straightforward design, with majority straight lines and right angles. I'm a fan of this approach to tubing, although we do like to build a water-cooled PC with more intricate cooling layouts occasionally. However, for a PC like this, already with a large amount of RGB, a vertically mounted GPU and tinted coolant, I feel it balances the build by opting for a straight line tube design. We've accented these tubes with a series of silver fittings. They balance well with the majority black in this build, and silver works well with the majority of RGB tones that can be selected. With the tubes and fittings all fixed into place, we can fill this PC's loop up with coolant. We have opted for transparent blue. This coolant strikes an ideal balance between lifespan and aesthetics, thanks to its semi-clear nature that still has a strong blue tint. Now I can show you every angle of one of the fastest and best water-cooled PCs we have ever had the pleasure of building.
Now that you've seen every angle of this rig, we can run it through a series of games to see how it will perform, starting with Fortnite. We have adjusted the settings to Epic, which is the maximum, and we're playing at 4K resolution. We're managing to average out a very solid 150 FPS at these fairly intensive settings. Fortnite is always a surprising game for me in terms of quality. When played at max settings on a 4K monitor with a PC of this caliber, the viewing experience is such high quality. In my head, I just assume that Fortnite is simply a thresh down shoot em up, but there is a serious graphics quality with this game. Now we're going to jump across to Helldivers 2, which after its hailed release has become the most popular game for PC at the moment. So it'll be great to see what the best GPU, the RTX 4090, when watercooled, can deliver on this very popular title. We are still gaming at 4K resolution, and once again we have set the graphics quality to maximum. Playing Helldivers on a rig with such high performance parts, at the maximum quality, makes it quite easy to see why this game has become an instant hit. This PC is managing to deliver between 135 and 140 FPS on this game. Rather uniquely with Helldivers, it was built on a discontinued graphics engine, which makes it rather difficult now for the developers to incorporate DLSS 3. This is kind of unfortunate, especially with a game like Helldivers, where an increased frame rate from AI upscaling would assist in responsiveness and thus your chances of survival. Accordingly, the only hope for better performance is to run the game on the best PC hardware. The only real disappointment I see with this game is the lack of PvP. I understand the developers wanted to minimize the toxicity that could arise from that, but a game like this with what feels like real consequences to territory gains against the aliens would be very suited to a civil war dynamic, where players take on factions and battle it out against real people. The final game we will be running this PC through is COD Warzone, so we will drop into Verdansk to see what kind of FPS you can expect with a rig like this. Once again at maximum settings at 4K resolution. We are managing to average around 210 FPS. It wouldn't be Call of Duty unless I chuck a quick teabag in here. Maybe this is the toxicity that Helldivers wants to prevent. Even in graphically intensive environments like water scenes, we aren't experiencing any significant FPS drops and gameplay is buttery smooth. Throughout the various games as well, this PC has remained whisper quiet, and unsurprisingly, this watercooled PC has managed temperatures exceedingly well. If you would like to see us build a custom PC with the RTX 4080 Super, where we also benchmark it on Helldivers 2, check out the video in the corner, and please subscribe for more PC build videos and gameplay benchmarking.